This video is sponsored by Elcom and we'll talk about that later. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create an effective UX UI portfolio that will help you stand out and get your job interviews. Hey designers, my name is Fahim MD and I'm a senior product designer and let's begin. Hey, just wanna have a quick disclaimer here. Uh, this is for junior designers who have either taken an online course or have gone to either university or college. Therefore, I'm not going to explain to you what a UX and UI designs are or what the UX processes are. If you are interested to learn about UX UI design, I have a free course of that, which I made in my YouTube channel and I will link that below. So if you're interested, go ahead and check that out. This course is for someone pretty much who is struggling to create a portfolio and what they should add in their portfolio. So if that's something that you're looking for, then continue watching this video. One of the most common things that's really hard to apply when you are starting out is one-on-one -on -one user testing, conducting um, user interviews, um, using tools like Adobe Stats, Hotjar, Google Analytics, any data-driven tool into your project so you're able to you know, comfortably read those data and enhance the user performance of the project that you are working on. Those type of things is what you learn on the job. Matter of fact, a lot of companies nowadays actually have a team that specializes in that and they are called user researchers. Even if you don't want to do any UI design and your design skill set is a bit weak but you love doing the research, then you can primarily just apply for a user researcher position and I'm sure you'll enjoy it. And of course I will dive more into this in one of my upcoming videos. So if you're interested make sure to subscribe and click on the bell icon. I bet you, you didn't expect that coming. The thing is, when I was creating this video for you guys, I had to think like a junior designer. What would I really need to include as a junior designer into my portfolio so I can get a job interview and hopefully stand out? So there's three simple things and that's pretty much it. And I swear to God, it's going to be extremely effective for you guys. Well, I really hope it does. Okay, so number one, drop facts. At the very beginning, make sure to have a quick summary of your project before you show your designs or any of your UX process. So this sentence here is about the project where it talks about event tickets, flight, and hotel packages under one roof, what they're looking to achieve, the challenge, the solution, my, my role, and my UX process, followed by six months, it's how long it took me. The tools is right here, and this was the time when I was transitioning from Photoshop to Adobe XD, and I think it was their beta version. Uh, make sure to include that into your portfolio piece. I didn't do it because Behance has this feature, but just in case, let's have it at the bottom. And then once you go down, you'll see my UI design. Um, the brand guidelines and things like that. One of the important things you need to consider is when a recruiter is reviewing your portfolio, they're also reviewing hundreds and thousands of portfolio. Make sure to keep it sweet and simple. If they are interested, they'll give you a call and that's when you do a deep dive about the project and you can talk a lot about your UX process, your experience dealing with the client or the stakeholders, how you came up with the solution and things like that, which will definitely lead you to round two where you will have an interview with the senior product designer. Number two, following instructions. Trust me, this is extremely important. Anywhere between mid to large corporations, they already have a design team. There are junior designers, intermediate designers, senior product designers, uh, head of product, VP of product, and the list pretty much goes on. Just right now for this video, let's just focus on junior designers and senior designers. So I'm a senior product designer. So what we do is we mentor designers who are junior and we also give them tasks and etc. By the time when the junior designers enter the company there has already been proved brand guidelines and also design system let's just take the brand guidelines out of the way because it's quite simple just colors and fonts and, and things like that but now in terms of the design system it's important to know if you understand what it is and if you are able to apply it into your project if you're someone who's going to say redesign a small element or a feature on youtube it is your job to do your research and find out what the design system is and apply that into your project and when you're showing that into your portfolio you need to include the fact that hey i have used youtube design system into my project that's a very big plus here's a quick example of a design system i downloaded this from adobe xd and 
a design system usually in companies will be a lot similar to something like this so if you are designing any existing com component make sure to have a snippet of the design system into your portfolio so here's an example of a portfolio that i did for you guys i took a screenshot of this from an, an existing portfolio so this is not mine whatsoever and you can just include it into your portfolio. Just ignore this part. This is our design system. You can just cross this part out, but you can have a similar design system added into your portfolio piece. That way it will show the senior product designer that you can, you know, follow this design system. It's extremely powerful to have into your portfolio. So with bookseeds.com, when I was working on this, there was no design system and I had to just follow the brand guidelines, which is the typography and the colors. You can see throughout, I have applied the brand colors here, the background here, uh, call to action, prices, and things like that. If you're interested to know more, visit my portfolio. You can also visit their website. And number three, it's time for you to talk the talk and walk the walk or talk the talk and design the design. I thought that would be better or funny. What? If it made you laugh, please like the video. So this is pretty much your opportunity to showcase your UX process and your art boards, art boards, <coughs> money water, your art boards as in your UI design and wireframes. I'm sure at this point you have done extensive research on portfolios and realized that not every portfolio or majority of the portfolio are the same, which is fine. My, I wouldn't really recommend my own portfolio to you guys. I don't really have all of the UX process, but at the end of the day, I still get DMs on LinkedIn asking for if I'm interested for and to come in for an interview and things like that. Pretty much tells me that I, I really don't need to update my portfolio or work on any source of new style for my portfolio. Matter of fact, I did update mine in 2018 and that's pretty much it. But if I was a junior designer, I would try to add these process, what I'm about to show you. So here's a quick draft that I did, which you can download. So go ahead, the, the link is below. It is a small wireframe. All of these um, designs that you see here, example screenshots are taken from other websites. I did not create these designs whatsoever. As you can see, it's just a wireframe. So feel free to be creative and make it look pretty and make it stand out. A great example to this would be, I guess, my portfolio in terms of how you want to make a look and feel, but I want you to design it the way how you would like to design it. Here is the small summary of what we spoke about, followed by the design system. So now after the brand guidelines and design system, now is your chance to show your UX process. The first one is the discovery stage. So you can do it either in point form or in paragraph, whatever you are comfortable with. Now with user research, if you have service and interview, that's great. Once again, you can do this in a point form or in paragraph, whatever you are comfortable with. If your UX research is different, you don't need to copy the way how I have it. It's just an example followed with user persona. If you haven't done a user persona, I highly recommend you to do it. It's quite easy. In my free UX UI design course, I talk about user persona, which I have it linked below. So go ahead and check that out. Two user personas are ideal. It doesn't have to look like this. You can, you know, Google it and find out whatever is easy for you to design. And if you haven't done a uh, user persona into your project, just fake it. Just, yeah, honestly, just, just fake it. And that's the only truth, man. But don't fake it in a way that if you do get hired at a company, you don't know how to do a user persona. So I highly recommend you, you to learn the basics of it and then apply it into your uh, portfolio piece, followed with user flow. Now the user flow that I have seen nowadays, there are actually two types. Number one is like this, which is more of a sitemap style and it's just text. And number two, it's instead of just text, they also have wireframes. So whichever one, once again, works with you or you have created, feel free to do it. If you haven't done a sitemap or a user flow, make sure to, you know, once again, you gotta fake it. This is the most common research for UX designers, competitive analysis, and some people call it competitive research. I like to call it competitive research. Over here, some portfolio websites have just logos and paragraphs, and some portfolio websites just have logos with screenshots of their product. So do, once again, do it however you feel best. And last but not least comes the wireframe. When you're displaying wireframe, you don't have to have three rows of the wireframe or even two rows. You can just have a small snippet of the wireframe. That's pretty much it. Because a senior product designer, they really focus more on the UI. I mean, it's great, you, you can do wireframe. In the reality, when you're working for a company, a lot of companies seems to be a fast paced environment. Therefore, able to do wireframe in projects, it's, 40% chance that you'll be focusing a lot on wireframe. Uh, at the end of the day, UI works a lot better 
backed up by the research that you have conducted. So yeah, like I was saying, have a, have a small snippet of the wireframe and then your UI design. To keep it consistent, make sure whatever you have displayed in your wireframe is the same in your UI design. So don't do whole different design here and then whole another design here, then it really wouldn't make sense when the recruiter is looking at your design work. And that's pretty much it, sweet and simple. So you got your UI design, you have your wireframe, competitive analysis, user flow, user personas, minimum two, don't forget, user research and discovery stage, followed with the basic of design system brand guidelines and a small information or a small summary of your project. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on. Before we go back to the video, this video is actually sponsored by Elcom and they have gave, they actually gave me this sweet 360 speaker it's called Tetra speaker. I will link the information below. And I actually did not open this. This is right here. This speaker is actually not that big. It's actually very light, not even one pound. And the speaker experience is actually a 360 experience. So let's go ahead and plug this bad boy up. So I'm gonna play this Lofi track into the speaker. This little guy has a 360 dynamic bass and crystal clear stereo sound. So you can see the speaker from here and then all the way it goes to the top, which is right over there. It's small, you can put it in your living room, dining room even, or even in your bedroom. It fits pretty much everywhere. So when I was playing the sound, I used my Samsung Galaxy S20 Plus and it's Bluetooth, so it doesn't require any wiring whatsoever. So it's great. It did not lag whatsoever, so the experience of connecting it was very smooth. It was literally under three seconds, so I actually like that part. This is a glass fiber cone design, and the material is so hard, look at that. So if I even drop this maybe like 10, 20 times, I don't think it's gonna break, it's not that type of product. And the base is better than Google Home and Alexa itself, so definitely respect on that. I didn't even expect that, so it's very great. Full details of it, I will link it below. And if you want to purchase it, I will drop an Amazon link as well. So you can buy this on the spot. So I think for a price, it is quite, it's actually one of those products that you think will not perform that well until you use it. In that sense, I definitely was impressed by the, by the performance of this product. Every time you turn this on and off, it makes, it gives this uh, nice ocean sound. Check it out. And now let's go back to the video. All right, and that is it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope it was helpful. If it, if it, if it was, please like this video. And if you have not, welcome to the family. Welcome to the family. And subscribe, click on the bell icon. The bell will pretty much let you know every time I upload a video on your phone, on your smartphone pretty much. And if you do like the video, it will really help me, you know, boost that YouTube algorithm game, whatever you want to call it. It's super annoying, but yeah, liking this video will definitely help me out a lot. Until then, I'll see you guys in my next video. My name is Fahim MD, and I'm a senior product designer in Toronto. Peace out.